Welcome back to The Short Game. This is a show where we talk about short video games, games that respect your time. Uh, all the cool hosts are here. I'm Reagan Kelly, and uh, we've got with us today Laura Nash. How are you doing, Laura? I'm doing good. Nate Heininger. How are you doing, Nate? Loving this new amped up Reagan we got. That's the most excited <laughs> you've been in an intro I think I've ever heard. I have to say, I'm a little excited about the end of 2016. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> and talking about something good that happened this year. Yes, yes. And my bro, Shane. How are you doing, Shane? Honestly, I'm a little drunk because we were going to start a while ago. Usually I start drinking right at the start of the podcast, but there was a good hour delay here, mm -hmm. and uh, I am on the third one of these things. It's all it takes. Sounds yeah. perfect right. for this year, and we're bringing 2016 to a close with our typical Game of the Year episode. We've done two of these now. This will be our third feels like a really long time to be doing this stuff, right? We know you were waiting for it. Everyone's everyone's loving these Game of the Year lists, so why can't we do one too? Um, and we're going to be focusing on the short games of 2016. Uh, so we're, we're going to be kind of rounding up games that uh, we've covered on this show. Uh, well, technically, we weren't restricted exclusively to short games covered on this show, but because, you know, we're so great, I think we covered all the short games. <laughs> I mean, if you took... One week off of work, you could probably play the entire list. Yeah, absolutely. And still, like, eat and shower, so. So not absolutely everything in our listing here is something that we covered on the show, but pretty much. And uh, we're going to be talking about the top short games of 2016. Uh, our process this year was pretty similar to what we did last year. Just to kind of explain, we each make a list of five-ish games. Uh, we rank them, uh, and we have, uh, I have quietly... Uh, tabulated the results. Um, I'm assigning everything a point value based on where people ranked it in their own lists, and then we take those points, add them together, and whatever ends up at the top ends up at the top. Yeah, I'm kind of curious to see what winds up at the top here, because I know I voted for some games that were a bit controversial on the show. Uh, not everyone liked them. Ahem. <laughs> and so, yeah, I, I know I'm not going to get all of my picks, but I hope I get some. Well, I think that actually this year our lists were more in concordance than they were last year. Good word. Uh, so uh, I think what's probably going to work best would be for us to work our way from fifth place up. So we had about 30 games that were mentioned or covered on the show that were released in 2016. Uh, not counting all of IF Comp or Itch.io, um, which are kind of smaller games, but thirty games a lot. And I'm, but I mean, when I reviewed, I was pretty sure I was like, oh yeah, these are my like five, and it was probably the fastest I've ever had to make my list. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, this year uh, it was it was pretty easy uh, to make my list this year. Um, a lot of really strong contenders, uh, but a lot of the games uh, that I had at the top of my list were ones that I've known we're going to be at the top of my list for a little while now. So starting with a three-way tie for fifth place on our ranking for 2016's Best Short Games, we have three games that we covered on the show that all of which I think are really cool and really worth checking out. And they are Severed, Hyper Light Drifter, and Thumper. Yeah. Nice. And that is with a combined five points. Now, uh, Severed was a game that we did pretty recently. It was uh, It's out on the Vita and on iOS. Uh, I would totally recommend checking that game out. I'm really, really glad we got a chance to, to do that before 2016 snuck away from us. One of the problems I have had is that a lot of the times the games that I end up really loving, uh, an example would be Assault Android Cactus. That's a game I absolutely loved, but it, I played it in early 2016, but it came out in 2015. Um, and yeah. Human didn't... Resource Machine would have been on my list last year. Oh, yeah. I know. I had to look up Cactus because I was like, ooh, that was one of my favorite games we did this year. And then like, oh, it doesn't qual uh, qualify. But Severed, uh, while it was not on my list, it was like there were times when I almost had it one of my top. I, I loved that yeah. game. It just didn't ultimately cut it for me for like my favorite of the year. But man, that game hit me harder than I expected it. Yeah, it was pretty high on my list. Um, for me, it was my second place game of the year, which um, much higher than I kind of expected to rank it. But when it really came down to it, I think that's the game that I was like most surprised to really love this year. Like mm -hmm. it, it came 
it didn't come out of nowhere exactly. I'd been waiting for it for a long time. But, you know, when it was announced, it was like, oh, this Vita exclusive. This is going to be a weird one. Um, but finally it came out on iOS and we did it for the show. Great game. And Shane, Hyperlight Drifter, you gave that your top game of the year status. Hyperlight Drifter is absolutely my game of the year. Hyperlight Drifter, uh, to me, just sort of is a perfect example of what I wish more games were, which is stylistically amazing, uh, technically excellent, and really engaging, and you're just in and out. And I, 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 I think it's maybe not a game for everybody. I don't, I can't put my finger on why it didn't land for some of the members of this crew here, but Hyperlight Drifter is on, I'm not alone in putting it on my, uh, among my top games of the year. It's, it's, I think, one of the best games that came out in 2016. Uh, in my opinion, it is my favorite 2016 game. I totally respect that choice, too. Uh, it didn't land for me the way that it did for you, but it was mostly, I felt like, because... You couldn't put up with the difficulty. You it was hard. Too was much hard. of a wuss. It was too hard for me. It was very difficult. Yeah. I love hard games, and it was this was this was a hard game, and I like hard games. Um, but that's cool. So I, I get it. I, I totally get it. And I would say that, Shane, you put the most time into this game of any of us, too. And I would bet if we all committed to it as hard as you did, uh, it would probably be a lot higher for everyone. Yeah, it, it's mm-hmm. a game where you step into a room, and there's like a thousand guys that you have to kill. And... You just execute perfectly some kind of crazy ballet sword swipe that takes them all out. And that's just a great feeling. And then uh, Thumper is the other one, right? Yeah. I loved Thumper. I wish I'd gotten more of a chance to play more of Thumper. I think it probably would. It didn't make my list this year. And just mainly because there's a lot of really great games that did come out. And I, I didn't. I didn't buy Thumper personally. Um, I played it at your place, Shane, on the PSVR. But Laura, like, why did it make your list? Tell me about it. I, I've been in the bag for Thumper since I played it in that sketchy, uh, like, RV at the back of Bitbash. And I, it was just <laughs> completely dark. And I played this game and I was like, ah, uh, yes, this is like um, all the rhythm games that I would come home at 2 a.m. from theater and like, everyone would be playing, like, uh, those rhythm games in, um, like, not like Guitar Hero, but the, the shooter one for PlayStation. Mm. And I, I, it brought me back to that um, that time. And also, I love rhythm games. I wish that more of them were as tough as Thumper is. I think that rhythm games, if you are musically inclined, can be really easy. Thumper does not let you off the hook. It's hard, it's stylish, and you can just get lost in it. And I love how... Um, stylish it is and how uh, bold it is. So many rhythm games feel like they need to be poppy. Mm -hmm. And I love that, but sometimes you want something more intense. You want something that feels more visceral. And I can't believe that someone made a rhythm game that feels so in your bones as Thumper. Yeah, absolutely. It's a it's a it's a rhythm rhythm game that wants to fuck you up. Exactly. <laughs> it wants to beat you in your head, and it, it. I'm not coming out singing the songs. I'm coming out like feeling like I just ran a marathon. I've like, come out of that sweating and drenched and wanting to take a nap. <laughs> like I came out of it like I just went to the club, <laughs> like, but a really bad club where people probably gave me terrible drugs. Like a club in an RV in the yeah. back of a Comic-Con. Like a club in an RV in the back of a game studio. <laughs> wow. For people that listen to our Thumper episode, I've got some updates about Thumper. First off, they have some they have gone ahead and, and corrected basically every complaint I had about that game. I oh, remember wow. Remember that my, my number one complaint about the game was... Was the drift, right? Uh, well, the drift, they've, they've fixed that. They've got a button you can hit to recenter. Um... They have added my my biggest complaint was the volume, the audio volume. I felt like I needed it to fucking deafen me, and they've added an in-game audio control. Um, and on top of all of that, they've added a new game mode where uh, two things are different. One, uh, your your beetle is gold. It is a resplendent, <laughs> beautiful golden beetle uh, instead of silver. And was that one two, of your big requests? If you yes. die, you go back to the start. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, yay. They made a wimp mode. That's fantastic. Yeah. They, they've also given you uh, the option to restart a segment uh, by holding a button down on the controller. That's really nice. Uh, so you don't have to, like, 
you know, you, you, you've, you know, you've fucked up and, and now you can just, you know, jump back. Uh, that's very nice. So yeah, there's been a lot of improvements. What happened when you would die before? Uh, when you died before, uh, it would strip away your carapace and uh, you'd have to like guessed. get all the way through to the end and die. And there was a death animation that would go through. It's too you slow. Skip. Yeah, you can actually jump through that death animation now, like speed it up by hitting X. Uh, mm. Or at any point, you can hit a button to jump all the way back mm. uh, to the start of the segment, uh, which sometimes in a rhythm game, it really does help to just like kind of reset and recenter and like, you know, start a whole a whole bit again. So... Yeah, there's been a lot of really good improvements to Thumper that haven't changed the basic experience, but have just, just really nice quality of... Oh, another one is that um, the game used to boot up in 2D mode and you had to switch on VR mode. Uh, and now if you have the PSVR connected, it automatically starts up in VR mode, which is another nice... It knows. Nice, nice. Nice change, yeah. So all in all, like they've continued to support the game. It's uh, It was my number two game of the year. Um, I, I I can't say enough good things about Thumper. Wow! Oh, and the record came in the mail. <laughs> oh, you my have record. such a good record. It's so pretty. Oh yeah! Oh it's my beautiful. gosh! It's so cool. It's like a picture disc. I'm not a hundred percent. I mean, as a this is going to be me revealing my vinyl collector nature for a second. But picture discs in general have sort of a, a characteristic hiss to them that's not present on other vinyl records. Uh, so I wish they hadn't done a picture disc, uh, but. It looks uh, great. I, I'll forgive them because it's a fucking awesome record. The thing I've noticed about uh, Shane having three drinks before we record is he just says the word fuck way more than he normally does. That's so like <laughs> <laughs> That's <true>. the f- <laughs> fifth time. <laughs> well, we were ta- in, in his defense, we were talking about the most metal of games on our list, Thumper. Like, I don't think that the other games are going to be quite as rad. That's fair. And- no. That's totally absolutely reasonable. true. Well, Shane, thanks for the update on that. I'm glad to hear it, and I'm going to give it a try uh, on my vr list setup. Um, I should also mention that we didn't do a whole episode on Thumper, but we discussed it very extensively in our PSVR uh, episode. We did a, a sort of a deep dive not too long after the PlayStation VR came out. So if you're interested in hearing about uh, Thumper and many other games for PSVR, uh, check that episode out. I think it was a really good one. Um Those were the three games that are tied for fifth place on our list. Um, Fourth place on our list was a bit of a surprise uh, for where it placed, for me anyway, but that's uh, Abzu, the fish simulator. Yes. Hey, don't make fun of the fishes. I needed that relaxing, and I didn't actually expect Abzu to place as highly as it did, but when I looked over the games, I was like, oh... I had the best ex- one of the best experiences of the year playing Abzu. I needed that. I needed those relaxing yeah. fishes, man. I needed I them absolutely hard. Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. I think we're going to need it even more in 2017. Mm-hmm. It's like they knew. It's like they knew that we were going to need something relaxing and zen to, you know, bring 2016 to a close. Uh, if you haven't played Abzu, uh, I think a lot of a lot of reviews for it were kind of mixed because people have different expectations, and you know, it being a follow up to Journey, people were looking for they were looking for something to, I guess, uh, move that concept forward. And really, what this did was just express sort of new emotional territory in a similar sort of experience. And it's a, it's a very very good game. Uh, I didn't place it at the top of my list. But I'm glad that it's on our list because I think it's great. I think it's a really good sort of, you know, zen experience game. Uh, And I think I could recommend it to almost anybody. Yeah, I loved this game. Uh, It was, I believe, number four on my list. And yeah, I had the same experience as what Laura was saying. When I was going over the games we played, um, you know, going over my different qualifications for what I think is, you know, the best game of the year. And when talking about experience... uh, this just I haven't played many games that felt like this even Journey I love Journey uh, but like that doesn't really even feel the same that this same way that this game felt the swimming mechanics uh, there is more of a story than Journey not that there's like a kind heavy of, yeah. story but like <laughs> you you I felt I had way yeah Journey I, I probably like Journey more it's a classic but like half a Journey is just like like I, what is going on here? Uh, but with Abzu, like you have some like 
a little a few characters uh along the way you become a like a shark god dad uh you know it's it's great um, and there's just literally hundreds of beautiful fish models all swimming around doing their own thing and you can literally just sit and look at them and that on its own one of them's a coelacanth yeah <laughs> yep everything's in there just really one. good there's a there's a moment near the end of the game where you are like very gently prodded towards uh like rushing up to the up up and out of the water, so you jump out of the water, and when you do it, uh, the camera kind of pans around to the side, and like a whole bunch of fish jump with you, and it just felt so good, and it was so natural feeling. Like I could have turned left, I could have gone around, but like it just felt like I needed to jump out of the water, and I was rewarded with all of the fish jumping with me, and I was just like, man. This was a fun game, so I'm glad it went so high on our list. Yeah, me too. Inkle just did a podcast on joy in video games, and I think that's a word to describe a lot of Abzu. It's joyful. Mm-hmm. That's a really good point. And it's also really technically good. Um, it's like, its graphics are fairly simple, uh, although there's a lot of detail in the, you know, the design. Yeah, it's a it's a matter of quantity over quality in some cases. Where I mean, the like, fish are high quality can... fish. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah, but oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, they're they're spectacular fish, but some of them are spectacular in their number. Zillions of fishes. I, you know what? So many games are amazing because they represent a struggle. Like most games represent a struggle of some kind. You know, but Abzu is a game that's about just sort of an experience of peace. And there's so few games like that. It's beautiful. And it somehow makes that actually work. And uh, our next game up the list, perhaps the diametric opposite of an experience of peace. Uh, our number three game of the year is Super Hot. Super Hot. Super Hot. I have to say, Super guys, hot. the most innovative first person shooter i've played in years absolutely um and this one made uh quite a few of our lists sort of pegged in the middle um and i think that's because it's it's a really 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 good game that was fairly early in the year and got slightly edged out on my list by some stuff that came a little bit after it but super hot was kind of incredible it's ridiculous yeah. that no one has made this game before i know there's a VR version of this game that's not out yet for PSVR, and I, I, I want to go to somebody's house and play it on their thing, man. Just to play it, I just uh. yeah, it's Oculus, right? Yeah. Um, yes. This game is out uh, on um, PC, Mac, and Linux, and Xbox One. It's not on the PlayStation Four yet. And Abzu was a PS4 exclusive. We got a little bit of everything on this list, but man, I would love to play this in VR. Yeah, Super Hot was uh, my number two, but it's really like 1A and 1B. I wrestled with myself a lot for this being my game of the year. I loved this game. I there's This game makes you feel like more of... Shane, what the hell are you holding? It's a voice changer that my... I can't understand you at all. Please turn that off. <laughs> my mother-in-law put a voice changer in my Christmas stocking. Nice. I mean, Santa did. Sorry. <laughs> what the uh, hell? And Shane kept it within uh, within arm's reach of his podcast setup. Great, Shane. Thank you. Actually, my wife put it on my desk because she didn't know where else to put it. I, where the heck do you keep your voice changer? Well, I don't know. It has a belt <laughs> clip, so I guess you keep it on your person at all times. Yeah, you never know when you're going to need it. Uh, I totally forgot what I was saying, but I loved Super Hot. It's one of my I, – I, this is a game that I, pl I still play. I will go back and fire it up and play a couple rounds of Endless because it's just so fun. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Also, it makes you feel like way more of a, like a video game badass than any other game on the market. Above all of the ones like Grand Theft Auto or, or whatever hack and slash games, when you finish a level of Super Hot and it plays it back for you – and you see in full time all the crazy maneuvers that you were doing, throwing the gun, catching a gun, shooting, turning, dodging bullets. I mean, 
you do everything. It's like superhero stuff. It just feels so good. So good. Super Hot is absolutely an incredible game. And uh, I, I think if uh, it hadn't been such a strong year at the top, of our list here, it would have been number one. Uh, but continuing up our ladder, uh, and I will say that games number one and two, our first and second place games, were within a hair of each other uh, and really evenly balanced. So, um, you know, these are two dueling number ones in a sense. But number two, uh, second place game of the year for the short game of 2016 was Firewatch. Firewatch was a game that I'd been looking forward to for a really long time when I found out that it was, uh, you know, being made by the team that was making it. You know, it's a, a great writer in Sean Vanneman, good cast, a um, bunch of developers that I thought were cool. The um, the uh, artist whose name is suddenly escaping me, Laura, can you help Oli me? Moss. Oli Moss. Oli Moss, thank you. Uh, just an amazing team, and I'd been looking forward to it for so long. And when it finally came out, I did not think it disappointed. I, I, I really liked it. Um, and I'm glad it's on our list. Yeah, this was a uh, we've done it a few times this year, a a, uh, a buy on release game for us. Mm-hmm. I think we all played it within like 40 hours of it coming out. Um, and yeah, as as Reagan said, you know when a game gets this hyped, uh, it's hard to live up to it. And I had avoided most, uh, if not all, kind of spoilery so- sort of thing, other than I just seen some stills essentially. Um, but my expectations were still high just based off of really the hype and the credentials, you know, that we were talking about. And, uh, yeah, uh, this was my number one. I loved this game. Um, it builds on a genre that we've covered a lot in this show, um, narrative exploration, walking simulator, you know, as Mm -hmm. people like to call them, it somehow manages to have a a story that moves forward at a great pace while still allowing you to explore like you want to, um, spend as much time in the woods as you want to, but you don't want to because you want to figure out what's going on. And uh, at the end of it, it's sad, it's real, it's touching. Um, It, I've, had a lot more emotions in this game than I've really felt in in most video games, and that's what ultimately led it to my number one. And how gorgeous was this game, right? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. Jane Ing just killed it on the environmentals, so and good. Uh, it was insane. And I everything, not, yeah, everything was beautiful. This was my, I mean, I kept going back and forth between this and what I'm sure is number one as my first choice, but I ended up choosing Firewatch because I love games that I can share with people who aren't traditionally gamers. And Mm. this was something I recommended to so many people who aren't going to play every game that comes out because it, they all loved it. Um, I recommended it right and left. Everyone adored it. And I can't believe that even with all the hype and everything I knew about the game, that the first five minutes were a complete surprise. Yeah. Yeah. And and I would not, you know, if you haven't played it, don't listen to the spoiler section of our podcast because after we praise it, we cover those first five minutes. And I want you to have that experience that that stuck yep. with me more than almost any gaming experience of the year. Yeah. Go watch that scene in Up and then go play <laughs> and then... the first part of Firewatch and then just find a place to sleep for, uh, you know, all of 2017. <laughs> all of 2017. <laughs> just stay there. Yeah. Firewatch was an amazing game, so um, it, it was neck and neck with our top choice of the year. I think you're, I think you're right, Laura. It is a sort of a, a two part number one. Firewatch is probably the best game to recommend to somebody who isn't a gamer. But uh, if you are a gamer, I think you cannot get out of 2016 without playing our number one choice, which was Inside. Uh, Inside was another long awaited game. Uh, when it finally came out, I sat down to play it with. You know, not the highest of expectations. I'm on the record as somebody who didn't particularly dig its predecessor, Limbo. Um, But this game almost immediately grabbed me. And then not too far into it, my jaw hit the floor and stayed there for almost its entire run. This is a a game that just absolutely (laughs) blew me away. And then about two-thirds of the way, your jaw pushed through the earth's crust and it was uh absorbed into magma because that final part <laughs> yeah i delayed finishing this game because i had uh, technical problems with the parallels release and was waiting for it to 
I tried to play it on parallels and it just crashed halfway through. And I will say that the only reason I delayed playing this game the second it was available is because I, I wanted to sit and finish it in one setting mm. because I knew that that's how I was going to play it. And I was afraid for my life if I played it. <laughs> When I was really busy at work, when it came out, I was like, I'm going to get kicked off this project if I buy inside. So I made myself wait, and I was really glad I did. Um, I think it is probably the best game of the year for people who play games a lot. I'm the same way, Reagan. I thought Limbo was fine, especially for its time. It's, it's, it's a great game, but I don't often like go back and think, like, man, Limbo is one of my favorite games. Um, but I think what Inside is so successful is that they took – everything that's good about limbo and they just doubled down on it and added and, and, you know, learned from what they had already accomplished with, uh, with limbo. I mean, the game is beautiful. It feels great. Uh, it's got a really interesting story. Um, it's a mystery. It's almost what drives you to keep playing more so than it's pretty interesting puzzles. Um, interesting puzzle mechanics, scary zombies, <laughs> um, child child death i mean what more could you want in a video game i think it's going to stand up i mean here we you know we people were still talking about limbo uh you know years after its release and it was still making the you know best indie games ever lists inside i think blows that out of the water and i think it's going to be a game that we're going to be remembering uh you know anytime somebody tries to put together a list of best indie games for a long time and Absolutely. they spent like five years making it. A long right? time. Like it's this good. Game. We're going to be totally old. We're going to be old as hell by the time they come out with another game. We're already old as hell. Oh God, you're right. Um, I remember when there was no such thing as video games. No, you don't. You were born in 1985. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now everyone's going to steal Shane's identity. So, uh, just to kind of briefly round out the list, because I wanted to, to mention the things that ended up on our various individual Game of the Year lists, but didn't make that top five. These are the sort of runners up. Uh, and uh, in no particular order, they are uh, Oxenfree, Reigns, Virginia, Job Simulator, Tharsis, and Pocket Card Jockey. And all of those are great games, and you should definitely check out our episodes on each and every one of them. Um, I would particularly uh, lobby for Reigns. Reigns was probably my favorite iOS game of the year, uh, since I didn't play Severed on iOS. I played it on the Vita, but maybe second favorite if you count Severed. So if you're looking for a game to play on the iPhone, uh, one of the... You Reigns know, was great. Mm -hmm. Reigns was a fantastic game, and I yeah. put it... You know, I think I... I didn't finish it, but I also can't wait for more cards to be added. So I'm a total hypocrite because I'm like, I want I want Reigns to be like Westworld and then I want like 50 versions of it. I want sci-fi Reigns. I want fantasy Reigns. I want samurai like, Reigns. I want samurai Reigns. I want to see like underwater Abzu Reigns. I want every, I would buy this game a hundred times with different card sets. You know, that's a really good point. I didn't even really think about that. I hope they start just totally churning those out with different themes because i would totally play them no questions asked i would play all of them yeah. i'm kind of stuck on underwater abzu reigns because i really don't know which way i would swipe every one of those fish yeah that would yeah. be hard it'd be very important that you're like oh which way do i go yeah. on this yes to tuna but no to carp and I, I know that I am the only person that put it on their lists, but I still really recommend people check out our episode on the game Virginia, um, and I really recommend the game. I, I was sort of... I think the episode yeah, was pretty good. I, I know that a <laughs> lot was, of you guys didn't agree with me on that one. I was super sick, and I didn't realize it, so yeah. it was probably meaner than I would normally be, but... I also had feelings. Yeah, it was one of the best talks we've had on this show yet, and I really like the game, but there are some very, very valid arguments to the to the contrary on that episode. Really interesting talk there. I will just give a little shout out. If you have a DS and you like horses or you like solitaire, pocket card jockey. I almost put pocket card jockey on mine as well. I thought a good place for us to go with the rest of the episode, because we still have a little time, would be to talk about what our most memorable gaming experiences of 2016 would be. That'd be great. Yeah, let's let's dive in. You know, these these would be games that are not necessarily short games at all and weren't in the contention for short game game of the year 2016, or even not necessarily games, or even not necessarily 2016. Just what did you do in video games that you're going to remember? 
from 2016. Like moments, maybe even. Yeah. Yeah. I have to Overwatch. say, yeah, basically what changes said, like a game that has dominated my experiences of 2016, as far as games go, that in a way would qualify for our show. But I don't know if anyone else needs to talk about Overwatch because it's everywhere. Um, but in I love heart. that game. It's great. Blizzard did a great job. They continue to be able to take a genre, find its purest form, and put it out. Um, so I uh, I enjoy it. Yeah. I play with Shane. I've played with Reagan. I've got a whole group of friends I play with. It's great. It's an undeniably good game. I enjoy it a lot. I haven't been playing so much over the last few weeks, but I kind of still mean to go back and 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 pick it up again. And come back. We need a healer. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, another game that came out in 2016 that I haven't completed yet, but that I have a strong feeling is is going to be one of my favorite AAA game releases of 2016 is Dishonored 2. I was such a fan of Dishonored. It's way up at the top of my list of sort of best games of its type. And uh, I mean, if you, if you want, by the way, a really, really good dissection of a game, one of my favorite video game podcast episodes of all time was when Watch Out for Fireballs did a really deep dive on the original Dishonored. And I'm just waiting for them to, uh, you know, break their rules about how old a game they, uh, they do again and talk about Dishonored 2. Um, it's a it's a huge relief to see that the game is really good. Uh, it's not as I think narratively interesting as Dishonored One was. I mean, Dishonored One didn't have a, it, its strength was in its world building and not in its uh, in its story exactly to begin with. And this one is even more so. Its story isn't really grabbing me that much, but its world continues to be really really interesting and it's beautiful and it's super fun and it's more Dishonored and it's so good. So that's been exciting. I got it for Christmas, and I am loving it so much. It's so good. You know what I want to throw out there while we're talking about games that that we picked up at the end of the year that Mm -hmm. could be considered amazing 2016 game experiences is The Witness. Ah, yes. Um, I I, I missed out on that when it first came out just because I'm cheap and uh, I don't have that much time. Um, But I, I just started it the other day, and what a game. It's a game that I think both Justin and I are going to lose ourselves in independently and probably help each other out with. Um, another game that's on my list for this year that I, I don't actually know if it came out this year, but Haiti and Lands. Um, I've been playing with Reagan mm-hmm. and uh, Justin played independently. And I th- both The Witness and Haiti and Lands are scratching the puzzle itch in me, the really hard puzzle itch. Um, and although I've only watched The Witness be played and kind of worked through some puzzles, um, Justin's already done 12 hours and he bought it th- two days ago. <laughs> wow. <laughs> nice. I mean, yeah, he was on vacation, but still, it's a little bit obscene. Yeah, it's a technically a late 2014 release. Mm-hmm. That's one that I held off on that I've, I've been, uh, I really didn't think it was for me, and yet just been it's just been a deluge of positive reviews for that game uh and you know some some negative but like i've just heard so many good arguments that i should try that game that i've i've kind of revised my opinion on it and now i am in uh waiting for a sale mode rather than in i'm not going to buy that mode you're waiting for a sale on the witness it's 20 bucks right now oh okay i mean i i was waiting for a sale on it too <laughs> okay so now's the time maybe now's the time maybe now's yeah, the time yeah he said he's not gonna do more than that and any time in the next several years so uh, yeah, okay okay um then I guess I'm probably sold um the uh the other things that I sh- should mention one of my most exciting gaming experiences of 2016 was getting a notice that the last guardian had literally shipped in a box to my house and was on its way to my home I haven't even played that much of it yet, and to be perfectly honest, I wouldn't say that playing <laughs> The Last Guardian has been one of the most exciting video game experiences of 2016, but man, had I been waiting for that one for a long time. I think it had been pre-ordered <laughs> on Amazon for over two years, uh, and you know it had been announced, it seems like, in ancient history. Can you guys believe that The Last Guardian actually shipped, and it's a purchasable product i'll tell you i actually literally do not believe that it actually shipped and i don't know why everyone's lying to me well you can't really hype something that's been like hyped for like 12 years but it it felt like it got released with such little fanfare uh that 
I, it's like I just didn't see anyone talking about it. I opened up, uh, turned on my PlayStation one day, and it was like, oh shit, it's available. Nice, yeah. you know. And we got it, but I haven't played it yet. I think it could have been so much worse. Something that was in development hell that long, something that you know went through as many transitions as this did. It could easily we we could easily have been playing something that was a stitched together uh, muddle of false starts. And it's not that. And I think just that alone, the fact that it is a cohesive game that really still kind of feels like it has a singular vision is something really to celebrate. So um, I'm looking forward to finishing more of it, and I guess I'll probably tell you guys what I think more about it later. There's one more game, and I think we may do an episode on it later. But I think if this had come out earlier or we had all latched onto it quicker, it might show up on a bunch of our lists. And that is a game called Overcooked. Uh, which is yes. yeah. a couch co-op kitchen mania simulator. game. Yeah, kitchen simulator uh, that is just insane and it's so much fun to play. I, I love couch co-op. It's one of my favorite things to do. And um, this takes some of the, like, the insanity of a space team where everyone's just shouting out orders with like the process management of like a human resource machine so yeah. somehow in the combination of everyone panicking and screaming you have to build this like perfect machine of efficiency between your silly goofy little characters who are cutting up and making pizzas for penguins it's great it, it, everything is so funny it's so it's good. Fu- it's yeah it's great and if you're looking it's for a game to play good. with friends i cannot recommend it enough and i think we'll talk about it at some point more in the future yeah, that got a lot of love from uh, indie devs, too. And uh, they were asked for their favorite game of the year. There was a lot of uh, Inside and Firewatch. Um, a lot of AAA titles, too. Um, but I, I was really impressed the number of people who said Overcooked. Yeah, it's awesome. It's it's. I can't think of a better couch co-op experience that's come out this year. I can't think of one that you'd play more with Jamie. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm trying to convince her to give it a shot. Jamie, if you're listening, let's do it. Jamie loves food games, so it seems like a natural fit. I'm uh, I'm hoping that uh, when she's got some downtime, she'll be up for it. So what's everybody looking forward to in 2017? Um, it's looking like it's going to be an interesting spring. Lots of things are on the, you know, just about to come out list. Um, for me, probably the, the one thing I'm most excited about in 2017 got pushed back uh, again, and that's Persona 5. Uh, but hmm. I'm also really, really looking forward to some other stuff like uh, like Cuphead. I mean, there's cu- there's so many things that I've been waiting for so long. There's Below. There's um, the Edith Finch game. There's Cuphead. There's Donut County. Like, there's just games that have been on my list most anticipated for two or three years in a row. Uh, I'm hoping more of them are like Inside, where I've had my eye on them for a long time, and they're going to take five years to release, and it's going to be worth it. I'm going to choose to to dream here at the end of 2016 that these games that were supposed to be released last year that weren't um, were delayed for good reasons. Yeah, the we've got some great names: Cuphead, Donut County. I'm <laughs> yeah. into it. Uh, when I was in Houston, Shane and I played a little bit of the uh, the demo of Gravity Rush 2. Um, I have a I have a feeling that that's going to go under a lot of people's radars because it is a sequel to a PlayStation Vita game that nobody played. But it's a great uh, sort of platformer-esque kind of game uh, where you have – it's a 3D game with a gravity-flipping mechanic that is a lot of fun. Um, I played the first one and really liked it, and it's been remastered for the PS4, but I would probably skip it and play Gravity Rush 2, which is coming out on December yeah. 20th. The demo was real cool. and Really um, cool. I really want to play it. Zelda is coming out <laughs> in 2017. Yeah. Switch. It's Zelda. There's no reason I I know Nintendo ups and downs, but you got to be hyped about New Zelda, right? Yeah, you got to be hyped. I'm fucking hyped. Yeah. Who who knows if it's going to be like, you know, it's going to be the next uh, Link Between Worlds or if it's going to be the next Skyward Sword. But I think it looks beautiful so far. Um, and the idea that it's coming out, you know, uh, as a launch game for the Switch, I think the Switch seems like it has a lot going for it. You know, I don't want to make any predictions nintendo consistently seems to find ways to to spoil a sure thing (laughs) 
but uh, but I, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm still probably going to buy it right out of the gate. Well, for 2017, I I kind of have I just want to I just want to give a message to our listeners, right? Oh, okay. Um, so I just want to say this isn't our game recommendation or anything like that. This is this is probably just the outgrowth of the fact that I've had several shots of whiskey before <laughs> and during the course of the recording. But I just want to say to the people who are listening, first off, I'm glad you're my friend. That's the first thing I want to say. And second, I just want to say it's almost it's almost the end of the year. Hang in there, friendo. The, ne- the new year is going to be so good. You're going to find a new restaurant <laughs> that you love in your neighborhood, and they're going to have 15-pound burgers. And if you eat it, you're going to get it for free. And what? if you just, if you just, where is cling, this heaven? <laughs> if you just cling to all of the above, then you're going to make it through not just 2016, but 2017, and you're going to come out the other side having discovered the secret. <laughs> <laughs> Drop some marker. <laughs> I think that's a new chapter that uh, just started right there. Mm. Uh, yeah, man. Cool beans. <laughs> Feeling it. <laughs> How do you follow that up? Take us out, Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> Go watch some fishes and shoot some things. Guys, 2016 was a year, and um, we're putting it to bed. And it happened. It, 2016 happened, and 2017 can only only be better, and I'm really looking Don't forward to that. it. Don't say that. Don't say that. Oh, God. 2017 is coming right up and I is can't, also going to happen. I am looking forward to it. And um, thank you guys for sticking with the short game in 2016. Get a dog. If you don't have one, get a dog. <laughs> I'm giving pure positivity here. We played a ton of really good games this year and we can't wait to play new games next year, especially with all of you guys. So keep recommendations coming and keep listening. And we're so thankful for you. 2017. I believe in you. Yes. 2016 was a great year for indie games. Uh, Firewatch, uh, Inside, Abzu, Super Hot. All these games I think we're going to remember for a long time. Uh, Hyper Light Drifter, Shane. Um, we're going to remember Just for Shane. a long time. <laughs> I can only imagine what kind of sweet stuff's going to come out in 2017. But uh, I know it's fun to, uh, you know, say like 2016 sucked. But for our purposes, for video game world, it's been a great year for video it games. Has. And yeah. uh um, and I think there's a lot to be excited about, and this has been a fun way for us, I know, to get to play these games and for the people that listen to it and contribute uh, with your uh, messages and, and Twitter and all that. It just makes it even more fun for all of us. So, um, Absolutely. Uh, and in 2017, guys, listen, just just relax. Free yourself from the expectations of others. <laughs> Dream impossible things without having realists bring you down. Just make sure that you look at the world and see the best possible version of it instead of the worst. Take your pants off sometimes just because it's more comfortable. Um, Make a playlist. Make a playlist of amazing songs and share it with a friend. Find that friend and spend good times with them. Be the truest version of yourself. Leave an iTunes review for the show. <laughs> Rate and review us. <laughs> and, uh, and you can do that on our website. Uh, you can go to www.theshortgame.net where you'll find all that stuff. Um, but mostly, thank you guys for joining us on this journey of a podcast in 2016 and into 2017. Uh, I've been your host, Reagan Kelly, and you can find me on the internet at www.theshortgame.net and also at Reagan K, that's R-A-Y-G-A-N-K, on Twitter. Uh, and you can find the show at underscore short game. Laura, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at Laura J. Nash. And Nate, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at NateSTL. And Shane, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at 8BitShane, where, where over 300 people believe in me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And thank you guys so much for joining us on this episode of The Short Game. And thank you so much for joining us, not just on this episode, but in all of 2016. 
on the short game. See you next year.